Hi guys, Chris Cartledge here from odrackdigital.com. As you can see, the OD Studio is still a little bit of a mess, but we're working on that. This week, I just wanted to bring to you a quick look at transient shapers and what they do and how they work. So we'll take a, a more in-depth look in a second, but they kind of make sounds go from something like this to something a little more like this. Now we can use them in a whole variety of ways and they kind of are on the surface maybe sound like the same thing we'd use a compressor for but they work very differently. So let's take a look at how, what and why and at the end we'll also have a free plugin that we found that you can download and use and get transient shaping. So put simply, a transient is a sudden increase in waveform volume like we've got here. Now if, if this distance between here and here was 10 seconds, then it wouldn't be a transient, it would just be slowly working its way up to a peak. But if we've got this at, I don't know, say that's 50 milliseconds, then the distance, well the, the length of time between there being almost no sound and there being comparatively a very loud sound, is what we would call a transient. Now, so if this is our transient here, what we need to think of is how quickly we get to our increase in sound, not how loud that sound is. This entire waveform could be, I don't know, minus uh, 15 decibels above or below the maximum level we could have. But the important thing is that this section here versus this section here is quick. It's the rate of change that we're interested in. So when it comes to a transient shaper, let's draw this again like that. If we wanted to make the attack of our sound more punchy, we could reduce the amount of I guess time it takes to go from that quiet to loud. So if we increase the attack speed on our transient shaper, this section here would actually end up more like that. And similarly, if we increased the sustain on our section, it would look more like that. And of course, this is different to how a compressor works because a compressor will create a threshold like that and if anything goes above the threshold, like these peaks here, they'll be reduced in volume and squashed down, which will allow everything else to sound louder because the ratio between them is different. Transient shapers are different. Let's do our third look. So if we've got like this. If I wanted to dull down the tail end of our transient, so for instance, I maybe wanted to do something that looked like that for our end, we could. And we can then just get rid of these bits here and take a look at how our sound will look. Now it's important to note that these sections here, they're not being flattened out like a limiter, they are actually just being made quieter. So we've got this going on a little bit and it's smooth still. but. Using a transient shaper allows us to, let's say, snap up that increase in attack and smooth out our decay. So let's go over and look at how that would be working in a plugin. Okay, so here we are in Machine. It's actually Machine 1.8 because we've just got Machine 2 through the OD Studio doors and we'll be reviewing that shortly. We've already done a little preview but anyway let's get back to the point what i've done is recorded in purposefully recorded in two kind of crappy uh, audio samples i've done a, a beatbox kick and a snap and they sound something like this so they're not exactly inspiring but it leaves us a lot to do with the transient shaper now you can see that in each of these i've got a transient master plug-in about to start. So if I unbypass this first transient master plugin, what I can do is I can increase the attack percentage. And what that's going to do is increase the volume of all of the 
parts of the transient that are in its attack phase, the bit that goes from silent to its loudest part. And you'll hear what happens as I increase them. So suddenly I've got a much, much snappier kick. And if I come all the way down to center again and then go to minus, you hear that it actually starts to get softer and less snappy. So if I increase this up to something like that, we can really hear the difference. And similarly, if I go to this sound here, which is our finger snap, I can do the same kind of thing. Suddenly I've got more snappy sound. And I can also do the same thing with the sustain, which is the latter half of the transient, the part from the center of the loudest point as it drifts back into quietness again. So turn it all the way up. I get the, the tailing away section a lot snappier. And if I come down, it becomes shorter. And to demonstrate that with the kick, I get all that noise that's in the background. A little bit of my spit and dribble, I suppose. And then we come down. And it suddenly becomes a lot sharper and tighter. So you can use this for drums, you can use it for guitars, you can use it for bass, pretty much anything where you want to either increase the snappiness, the instant on kind of sound of things, or maybe you want to smooth things out a little bit. So transient shaping is a really handy technique and we've got loads and loads of options of how to go about doing it. There are ways of doing it in hardware, there's also loads of plugins. Uh, as we've just seen, Machine's new version has the Transient Master built in. It's been something that you can buy as a guitar rig uh, plugin for quite a while. And Reasons, Kong Drum Synth has a transient shaper. There's loads of transient shapers in things like Logic and so on. But you can also download a freeware plugin called Transient Monster. And it's by Stillwell Audio. When I say freeware, it's actually kind of nagware. If you don't want to use it for commercial purposes, then all you have to do is download it and swallow the fact that there's a nagware screen that's five or 10 seconds long at the beginning. If you do want to use it in commercial recordings, you have to buy it, but if you don't, or you just want to try it out, Download it from the link in the description that will take you to our website and take you through. It's a very simple download. And as you can see, we've got attack and sustain just like we've got in Transient Master in Machine. And we've also got the transient length here. So we're talking about how long that transient is regarded for the purposes of the attack and the sustain sections. So that's all there is for this week's tutorial. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like and comment and so on. You might notice if you're a regular viewer, we tried something a little bit new with the drawing. It might take a while for us to really refine that. I think it could be something cool. If it was awkward and you didn't understand any of it, let us know because there's no point in us flogging a dead horse. But uh, that said, I'm Chris Cartledge. Odrantdigital.com is where you can get all of the tutorials, reviews, news, guides, and so on and so forth. And I'll see you next time.